super good singing. Hey, Amen. Good evening. 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 Good uh, from San Francisco to Sacramento to Salt Lake City, God, uh, and everywhere in between, Father. And we're, we're just so grateful uh, to have this opportunity for fellowship, for your word being preached, uh, for your spirit, God, and just for the opportunity we have to live our lives for you, God. I pray that you just move through the lesson tonight, move through your scriptures, move through the hearts and the souls of every single person on this call that we may move out of here from tonight, change for you and ready to conquer our cities for you, Father. We love you so much. We praise in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, bro. Well, it oh, is said that at the moment that you feel you have reached exhaustion, inspire yourself to take the next step because that next step is when you have arrived at the next level. That's right. So let, let's turn here to Romans chapter one, because I want to get us on, to bro. that next level tonight. And I know you guys want to get there, too. So Come let's on, go bro. here to Romans chapter on. one. Let's go, bro. And Paul writes there, bro. in Romans one, verse 11, he says, I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts to make you strong. That is that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. And Paul's heart, writing to the Romans here, he said, hey, man, I want to make sure that both of us get stronger. And, you know, here tonight, God ordained it that not only is Sacramento on the call, not only is it Sacramento and San Francisco, but we have Salt Lake City all the way from Utah on the call. Oh, my God! I believe it is because God wants to use this lesson to mutually encourage and call us to the next level. And that's why the title of my lesson tonight is The Next Level. Let's go. Oh, I'm not just going to rah-rah talk go. to you guys about getting to the next level. I'm going to give us two practicals. What's it going to take to get our church? What's it going to take to get our region? What's it going to take to get our personal relationship with God? Appreciate it, brother. It's good. To the next level. We're going to talk about two things. The first thing I want to talk about is focus, is focus. Let's turn here to Luke chapter five. Focus, bro. Come on. Come on. Luke chapter five. Luke chapter five, verse one, it says, out. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, We've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Focus. You know, here, the, the Simon, the, the apostles here, the fishermen, they were out doing a, another day of work. They were out fishing another day. And in the same way, you know, we're, we're just over a quarter of the way through the year of 2021. And I, I, I go as far as to say that a lot of us, I'd say the majority of us, have come to a place where we're at a monotonous routine in our lives and that doesn't mean that we're not spiritual that doesn't mean that you're not spiritual but it, but what, what happens is when we get settled in we come out of the winter workshop we come out of the beginning of the year we come out of our new year's resolutions and come march 
April, we start to get stagnated a bit. And it's where the apostles were at right now. It wasn't that they weren't working. It's that they weren't focused. And here when Jesus says, hey, you know what? Put out your nets to the right side of the boat. We got to understand is there's a right way and a wrong way to work. There you go, bro. It's not, it's not, it's not, hey, if I'm working, hey, hey, man, God's going to move. And hey, I'm just, that, that's all. If I'm working, God does the rest. No, no, no. There, there, there's a, a vowed focus we need to have in working for God. I, I so appreciate Emily Boone sharing at the beginning of Devo. She said, man, I just want, man, I want to lift up the, the power of follow-up. The power of follow-up. What she was really saying is, man, I want to lift up the, the power of focus. She was focused on following up. Yeah, let's go. In the same way, we need to be focused in our times of sharing. We need to be focused while we study the Bible with people. It's not, it's not a cookie cutter way. You know, if, if I'm following up, man, who, 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 what, what message am I sending out? Is this somebody who's 20 years old? Is this somebody who's 30 years old? Is this somebody who I, had a, I actually had a connection with? Is this somebody I, I can bring something we have in common with together? I can, I can mention in the text. Or, or is this just another blind person I'm reaching out to that I have no idea if there's, there, there's any sort of connection there? Am I just sort of blindly reaching out? Am I going out blindly sharing my faith? Or am I making an effort to get a read on that person? You know, even as we study the Bible with people, there's a focused way to do it. Each Bible study, it needs to be, there needs to be a focus. What type of person am I dealing with? Am I dealing with a, a, a rational introvert? Are there any blues in the house? We got any blues on the call right now? Hello. Hello. Ew. Hey, because, it, no, I rightfully it. so. They, they shouldn't make much noise. They're introverted and they're rational. They're like, I'm on a Zoom call. Why would I make noise? We do. <laughs> And for, for we're studying with we're studying with a rational introvert, man. We we need to we need to spell out what discipleship is to them. Hey, it's A plus B equals saved. That's what it means, and then that's gonna fire up a blue. But if you do A plus B equals saved, that's not gonna fire somebody up who's an extroverted emotional person. An extroverted emotional person is needs to know the why. Man, hey, yo. I'm a disciple because we have we have a lot of world to save. If you're dealing with a red, a rational extrovert, man, they have ambition. Man, God's gonna use you. Man, you're gonna become a leader in God's kingdom. You're gonna do something great. If it's an introverted emotional person, All they right, need to hope. Need to understand, hey man, I, I know you haven't Talk done much my up life, to this bro. point. You, you may not have a lot of hope, but you know what? That's why God's stepping in right now. Because God wants oh. to do something with your life. He wants to use you. But, but we got to understand is that each person we study the Bible with, we got to find a particular medicine. We, we, we can't do the same thing. If we're at a place where we've been, man, I've been doing seeking God studies, word of God. I haven't had a discipleship study in three months. It is because we need to start to calculate. We need to connect at a heart level. You know, we, I, like when I sit down and study the Bible with somebody, it's not a, let's turn here to Psalm 119. It's like, hey, man, what's up? Where are you from? Where, where did you grow up? Right? What, what are you into? We, we need to build those relationships to, so we can really focus in on the person's soul that we're studying the Bible with. And that the same principle goes for anything in life. You know, I just at a nutrition shop yesterday. And uh, go ahead, bro. get them gains. Greens. Got my multivitamin. I'm ready to go here. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Get You know, it's so cool. And it's, it's so convicting when you hear somebody who's so oh, zealous about what they're doing. I'm like, man, this guy's, he was so on, you. Up about health and wellness and nutrition. I was so convicted. I'm sitting there. I'm like, hey, man, this is, this is awesome, man. And, uh, uh, but he, one, one thing he said, he said, you know, everybody is different. You know, different. I mean, you could be the same weight as somebody else. You, you might need more fat or more, more protein, more carbs. You might need more rest. And da, 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 da. But he said, you oh, know, the, the carbs, there's bro. one universal truth that I found with everybody who I've worked with. And that is that the best way to see change is to get ambitious with your goals. 
get radical and get focused. Get radical and get focused. That goes with physical goals. That goes with spiritual. Man, we got to get radical. We, we got to get focused. We, we, so a lot of us have goals, man. I want to be fruitful. I want to be fruitful this month. You know, being fruitful this month, that's an awesome goal. But we got to get radical. We got to get focused on that goal. Instead of sharing your faith three to five people a week, that needs to, that needs to be radicalized to 10 people a day. Oh my you know, God. The same way, physical goals. You may say, I want to, I want to lose weight. Come on, bro. Right. We, we, that, that, that's not just transitioning from an omelet to a smoothie once a week. What's your, that, that's getting right. radical. That's Uh-oh. cutting your, your caloric that's goal, radical, caloric bro. intake in half. Even the, the nutrition guy's like, you know, what? I fast twice a week. I don't even eat two days a week. He's like, that's just <laughs> what I do. I get radical. I'm like, oh my gosh, man. I, I think I'm a radical hey, fast twice a week. What the heck? What's your man? bench? But, but he's just, just, but when you get radicalized and get focused, you're going to see great results in your life. You know, it's even what Acts 3.19, it says, repentance brings refreshment. You know, a lot of us, we, we, we've been painstakingly been agonizing our way through those, that one struggle in our life, Ooh. That, that one hurdle in our life. And you know, last year, almost exactly, just over a year ago, I preached for, uh, for Salt Lake, for Denver, for San Francisco, for Sacramento. And one of the, goal, one of the things I said, I said, hey, guys, put a, a mountain in your life that you haven't been able to c- overcome. Write it on a piece of paper, right? right? Show it to your household, show it to your disciple and say, man, I'm going to overcome this sin this year. Come on, bro. And, and we, we, we wrote down our sin. We said, man, we're going to overcome. Amen. But a lot of us t- tonight, we may be feeling like, man, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not feeling super fired up. Because a lot of us, the, the same sin that was plaguing us last year is the same thing plaguing us today, a year later. Aww. Come on, bro. And to, to get through that, it's not, it's not a pity party. It's not the, man, what, what's the secret? The, the answer is to get radical, to get radical, man. You've been struggling, struggling with lust. You've been struggling with, man, too much time on your phone. Get radical. Social media fast. Maybe, maybe it's a physical thing, man. I've, I've been, I, I know this was something for me. I had a goal last year. I have a, I have a, a prayer goal on my, on my, on my uh, wall from last year was a hey, workout four or five times a week. Last year, that was my goal, man. I, I didn't, I didn't hit that goal once last week or last year. Bro. Set to my, to my, to, to my shame. But a month ago, we started meeting back in person. You know, I started seeing some pictures. You know, a couple pictures. They caught angles. They caught all of me. And I said, man, I, a year in quarantine did, did a little something. So I, said, I said, you know what? That's it. I, I'm getting radical. So the last month, radical. I've been working out four, to five times a week. Let's go. Bunch of my calories and man. You know what? I feel amazing. That's I, good, feel, I feel the best I've felt bro. in five years at 27 years old. Come on, David. Because, Come on. because both physically, spiritually, emotional, repentance brings refreshments. Come on, bro. You know, after we get focused, Ooh. after we get focused on our goals, what we want to do, then we got to get smart about it. You know, let's go here to Mark chapter one. Come on, bro. This is great, bro. Mark chapter one, on, bro. Vamonos. And on, Mark bro. chapter one, you know, there's on, a bro. saying, work smarter, not harder. And this is something that Jesus had on straight. He worked smart. He worked hard, but he, he didn't confuse the two. And we see here in Mark chapter one, verse 29, it says, as soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. So here, man, Jesus had a full day. Right, he had a full day of healing. Right, he had a full day of kissing babies and healing the sick. Man, 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 encouraging the apostles. Man, helping out the families. Man, he had a long day. The next day, 
you know, this is a scripture that is often used by man, we got to get up early, we got to repent, we have early mornings with God, but we see here in verse 35, it says, very early in the morning, after a long day, the day before, it says, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, hey, Jesus, the guy who came out to Bible Talks the last couple of weeks, he wants to study again. They said, hey, the guy who's, who's been, who got to discipleship walked away. Hey, he, he actually wants to study the Bible again. He says, hey, the, the, the guy who's been studying the Bible for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, off and on, he wants to study the Bible again. What does Jesus say? Verse 38, he says, Jesus replied, so you got to believe Jesus here. He heard, hears them. Hey, man, they're, they're pleased. Hey, Jesus, they want to see you again. They're, they're ready for you. Jesus pauses. Looks at him and says, let's go somewhere else to the nearby <laughs> villages so I can preach there also. That's why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. See, Jesus was focused, but he wasn't sentimental. You know, and this is something that I've seen recently, and it's something that I, I've walked through too. You know, we, we get somebody who's, who's open to coming out, studying the Bible, and so, and we, we, we sort of hold on to them for a while, you know, week after week after week. So when somebody says, Hey, you got anyone studying the Bible? And I say, yeah, Johnny, Johnny's still studying. He, he's still coming out. He, I think he still might want to be a disciple. Uh, he, he's, he was at my Bible on, talk. We had two visitors. It was Johnny and my mom, but we had two visitors and, um, you know, and we, we sort of keep them around for our, for our own sake, for our own conscience, but already, man, I got to tell you guys, Johnny's not open. He's not okay. Oh, oh no! Not Johnny! <laughs> and this is something go, drop him. Right? Drop him off. G- Jesus here, he had a, he, had, he was, here's the thing, he was there for one day. So you got to believe that there were some people who may, may, may have heard the word late that Jesus was coming. Maybe they didn't get a chance. Man, maybe they had to take care of, they, they, they were having some, some trouble back home. They couldn't make it to Jesus. They really wanted to see him. Jesus looks at his disciples. He says, hey, we're, 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 we're going to keep trucking here, guys. I, I don't have time to go back. In the same way, we, we got to be smart with our focus. We can't just focus in on the people who we've, we've shown the truth to, who've seen the love, who've seen, been, seen the call of God. If they're unwilling to answer the call, amen. Amen. They have your number. They have your number. I promise they won't forget the Bible studies they did with you. And when they're ready, they'll come back. Come on, bro. I mean, us sort of keeping them close, but they're not not really they don't really want to repent. We're hurting their chances. We gotta say, hey, 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 man. Hey, hey, it's you know, it's been great getting to know you. Hey, I I, I mean I've been studying the Bible with people for two, three, four, five, six years. And you know, I know what repentance looks like. I know what a fully committed heart. I, I don't see it in you right now. You know, I know God wants to use you, but hey, hit me up when you're ready to really go after it. And that's gonna give them a better opportunity. To become a true disciple on, while still allowing you to focus on God's mission. Amen. You know, after we get focused, in, bro. Come on, bro. let's go, bro. After we get focused in, you know, the, the, the Bible is adamant. Get focused. Proverbs 4 25. Let your eyes look, look straight ahead. Fix your gray, gaze directly before you. Come Colossians on, 3 2. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. After we get this heart of focus. We got to get the other part of taking it to the next level on straight. And that is accountability. Accountability. Let's go. Here. Chapter nine. Preach bro. Preach, bro. Let's go, bro. Luke chapter nine. And we see here in Luke chapter nine, verse one, it says, When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for the journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. And people do not welcome you. Shake the dust off your feet when you leave their town as a testimony against them. So they set out and went from village to village, preaching the gospel and healing 
people everywhere. You know, here Jesus sends out the Bible talk. He says, hey, guys, man, go do the work. Go do the work. And now what happens? He sends them out. And then we jump back in in verse 10. It says, when the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. And we see that after Jesus sent them out, they came back for that accountability, for that accountability. Now, if you notice, it doesn't say Jesus sent out his apostles, and then he sent them three, 300 text messages and called them 12 times and left them seven voicemails for them to get back with what they were doing. No, it says he sent hey. them out. They came back. Oh, my gosh. They reported what they were doing. Come you on, know, you know. What you understand is that, that. The, uh, the, we're only going to get as much accountability as we're willing to give. Right? It's accountability is a give and take thing. Wow. But even the definition accountability is to give an account. It's to give an account. So for you saying, man, I, I need, man, I, I'd be doing better, but I just don't have much accountability. You know, my disciple hasn't been, hasn't been pushing me. You know, I, um, I, I have all the talents. I have all what it takes to be a ministry overseeing evangelist, but I don't have anybody <laughs> pushing me. Come on, bro. You know, and, and we, we can start to point the finger, you know, it, it, the disciple or the Bible talk, the household. The reality is that we're only going to get as much accountability as we're willing to give ourselves. That's it right there. You know, it's even if you look at Acts 2. You know, after the 3,000 got baptized, what does it say they did? It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' wow. teaching. Wow. Right? And this is a, this is a, a, a lifestyle and a, a culture that they built in the first century to the point, be, because when, when it wasn't just the apostles, here's the thing, the apostles, right? Man, these, these are incredible, powerful preachers, converters of of man, of religious, non-religious man, they, they, they saw so much power, so many miracles from the apostles. But the miracles came, came when the 3,000 started to dedicate themselves to the apostles' teachings is. to the point where two chapters later, it went from 3,000 getting baptized to 5,000 getting baptized. And it, it, we got something we got to understand is that if we want, feel like we, we're in a place where we need to grow more, we need to seek out the help, right? We, we, we need to go to our disciples. We, we need to go seek, seek advice, man, from, from older disciples. Man, you go, man, you see this, this brother who's the lead man. He's baptized four people this year, and he's led like three of them past the line darkness study, and I've only gone, I haven't gone somebody past seeking God. Don't get bitter at, man, your situation. Nobody's been hopping in my studies. I'm just somehow, no, go out, seek the help. Hey, bro, man, you, you've been doing awesome Man, what can I can I sit in a study with you? Man, 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 what 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 man, what man, what, uh, what do you do? How, Come how on, do you Yusuf. connect to the heart? And if we really want to grow, whether it's studying the Bible with people, we need to we whether we want to grow in our purity, right? Just just our righteousness. Maybe our, our quiet oh, times have been flat. Man, we we've been yes. we don't want to say anything, but it's been two months and we we haven't made it through, you know, half of the the half of Romans. We're in Romans seven, it's been three weeks, you know. And we're like, oh my gosh! Like, oh my gosh! Like, I, I know I need, I need help, but I don't know. I mean, my disciple asked me if I didn't have any quiet times. Yes, I mean, I read, I read fourteen verses. So yeah, I had a quiet time, bro. You know, wait a minute. I love Paul calling the man the Romans to the standard. I was super inspired. No, like, hey, hey, bro. Like, hey, sis. Honestly, like, I just, I, I don't know. You know, I just, I'm not connecting. You know, mm. maybe I don't know what it is, but there's so I. I I'll read three verses and then hop on Facebook and, and then I mean, 30 minutes, I got to go to work. I got a class and shoot, you know, it's been, it's been three days since I've actually read more than more than one stanza, to be honest. And we, we just got to get open. We've got to be accountable for our own relationships with God. You know, if you're visiting, if you're studying the Bible, right, right. Don't add, wait for man, the guy, oh man, well, you know, so-and-so he hasn't shot me a text. Uh, you know, like we're going to study tomorrow. I don't know, man, reach out, go, go after the accountability yourself, man. You set up the next Bible study, man. I know, man, I, I'm not in a place where I need to, I know I'm not right with God right now. I'm not, I know I'm not in, in the state of righteousness I need to be on, 
man, you, you reach out. We, we got to understand is that accountability, righteousness, purity, it, it all comes down to ourselves and our willingness to put ourselves there, out there. Because at the end of the day, guys, it's not about, you know, it's not a gotcha. We got to understand is that, is that man, we're, we're all in a, a crazy battle. And this is not going to get won by ourselves. We need every, all the help we can get. Now, Come when on, you, you know. combine focus and accountability, you can see some awesome results. I am reminded back to uh, when I was 13 and uh, in eighth grade, and it was, it was a tough year for me uh, academically. Hey, man. Come on, little Enos. I'm just being open with you guys. Um, it came to a point I was missing 11 assignments in my math class, and uh, uh, it wasn't looking good. It wasn't really good. So on a Saturday, and I actually, I honestly believe it was April. Um, it, who knows? It might have been exactly, what was it? It must have been like 13 years ago, 14 years ago at this point. Um, on a Saturday, 14 years ago, my mom drove me to my math teacher's house. All right. I talk about some focus and accountability right there. And I sat down terrified with my math teacher. It's kind of, it's a weird thing when you go to a teacher's house. It's kind of a weird dynamic. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's weird if anybody's done it. So I, I sit down with my math teacher on a Saturday afternoon. We sat down for an hour and a half, two hours. Focus, man, bone crushing focus and accountability. We knock 10 of the 11 homework assignments out. I take the one home, finish it myself. Wow. Boom. Right? You better man, go man, ahead. Bro. Amazing. Focus and accountability. And man, hey, Do it. to my credit, I did go. I, I put myself in the dojo. I put myself... Right. I mean, I think there was a little bit of pressure from my mom right there. But, hey, you know, I, I made it there, man. Then she put the focus and accountability on me, man. And I got the, I got the homework done. I got it done, guys. And it's the same thing for us. You may not be in eighth grade math, but I can promise you that if you get focus and accountability involved in your life, you're going to see some awesome things happen. Let's start to close out. Let's go to first Corinthians chapter three. Oh, man. Oh, man. Because awesome. you, you might be in a place where you're, you're just not feeling like that right now. You're like, man, hey, man, like, I understand what he's saying, um, but that, that's just not where I'm at. I'll get there, but man, I got a lot going on right now. I got a lot on, on my heart. I got to get, I'm going to get open about it. I'm going to get through it. But right now I got to focus on work, school, family stuff. But I want to encourage us with here in first Corinthians chapter three, verse 10, it says, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will because this because the day will bring it to light, it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only is one escaping through the flames. Right? And here I want to encourage us that man. Whatever we're building with, whether we're building with hood, wood, wood, hay, or straw, gold, silver, whatever it is, it's eventually going to be tested. It might not be this week. It may not be this month. It, you may not even get a, a severe test this year. We got to understand is that Christianity is, is a long, it's not, it's not a short game, right? It's, it's, this is a long game. This is a long battle. Right, so you might may, may understand you're you're not building with the best materials, and you're sort of putting off, put it off. But man, eventually, it's gonna be tested. It's gonna be tested. It could be next year, it might be five, ten years. You might be married. You might have three kids when the test really comes. But say, Satan's waiting for the most opportune time, and you're gonna get tested, boy. It's 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 gonna be messy. And we gotta understand is that we need to get ahead of it. Matthew 7, we, we need to understand, we got to build on the rock today. Get ahead of the storm. Get ahead of the testing. And we're, we're going to do that, family. If we get this focus and accountability, man, this is what contributes. Man, this is, this is those, those foundation that goes into the rock. 
it's the building on the rock isn't just having a quiet time, right? Part part of building into the rock is this focus and accountability. Let's go. And it goes out with us in Romans chapter eight. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Let's go, in, bro. in Romans chapter eight. Let's go, Christian. Paul writes in verse 38, he says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons. Neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And just as Paul was convinced, I myself am convinced, family, that when we get focus and accountability in our lives, we will take our personal relationships with God, our fruitfulness, our churches in the entire dream geographic sector to the next level for Christ Jesus, our Lord. I love you guys. Let's go. Um,